a lot of the time I get called a black or South Asian designer, but I'm actually like a black and South Asian female business owner. I own a business in a landscape that wasn't catered for me to do so. And I think that that means that I'm taking part in like a change in the economic landscape by having a black owned business. And I think I'm really proud of that. I grew up in London. I would regularly go to Southall or Tootin and I would see that culture in these like pockets of London that you don't really see reflected back in the TV or anywhere else. So I always knew that that was going to be integral to my work, I think. I did a BA at UCA Epsom and then I had a year out in industry and then I did an MA at the University of Westminster. And I think that was the first time that my education had been linked to industry and I was meeting stylists like Simon Foxton or designers like Charles Jeffrey. And I think it spurred me on to think about if I wanted to be a designer, I had to have like a story or what was I passionate about? And I kind of used that time to really figure out that. It's where I developed my book, Sweet Lassie, which was like an exploration into the secondhand clothing industry and what it does to India and Nigeria, like the countries I'm from collection was made from materials that were sourced on these trips and it was really like the starting point of like my ethos. Essentially men have been wearing the same clothes for like 50 years. Their wardrobes don't change. There's lots of traditions and rules within menswear and I kind of like the idea that I had the opportunity to sort of push against some of those rules or play around with the codes of menswear. There's so much experimentation within women's wear and we're maybe a little bit behind on the men's side. I care about like what is actually going on in the world and it sometimes can be exhausting. I want to craft ideas, but like how can I do that with my values and make them two things align? Where my work is so rooted in black and South Asian history and experiences, it's important for me that that's represented in my teams whether that's in-house, whether that's on jobs, like amplifying issues within collaborations I do with much bigger partners. We have had a discussion about how we source fabrics, how this can benefit like the community. So I think I've tried to basically like merge those two things together. In my brand, I really do try and encourage us all to have like a work-life balance. Saying that, I am my brand, so it's a bit difficult. I guess a day off can still include work, but I love my friends. I spend a lot of time with my mum. I love walking my dog or I love being in nature. And I really like going out. Bit of a party girl, to be honest. I've got lots of dreams for the future. I would love to like expand my team and build like a business that can give back and be like regenerative. And then also just to keep being able to have opportunities where I can just creatively explore all different things, furniture, aeroplane design, I don't know, car design, anything. I'm just really, I'm inquisitive. So my dream is to be able to carry on having a career that allows me to be inquisitive. I just really hope that the work that I'm doing and my peers, and I hope that really does make society a fairer place. I wish in the beginning I was aware that I should try and take everything in because I kind of can't remember a lot of the early days because it was such a blur. So now I always try and take a moment to really think about what we've achieved or what we've done and really let something sink in because I'm really fortunate to be in this position. And it's, it's actually like makes me feel a bit like emotional because when it's we're, we're really stressed and you kind of don't think about all these things, but when you zoom out, there's just been so many great opportunities.